Welcome to Broadway Corner with Ashley Ha, where you can hear your favorite performers talk about their career, how they got started, and everything in between. Make sure to follow me at Broadway Corner with Ashley Ha on Instagram and Spotify, and also my main Broadway account at Broadway underscore Corner on Instagram for updates on new episodes. Hope you enjoy. Hi everyone, welcome back to Broadway Corner with Ashley Ha. I am so happy you are here. Today is a very special episode because I'm talking with four of my classmates who are going to be at Boston Conservatory territory with me this fall uh, but that is not the reason that they're all here today they were all nominees for the 2023 jimmy awards and so it is anna wright aiden weinstein noah colvin and elise negroni yay <laughs> I'm so happy to have you all here. Um, and now we're gonna read all their bios because they've already done so much stuff and we're all pretty much we just graduated high school, so I don't know how you've done this much, but Anna Wright recently graduated from high school in suburban Missouri and is further pursuing a BFA in musical theater at Boston Conservatory at Berkeley this fall. Her most memorable past acting credits include The Meanies, Lily Blonde, Carrie and Carrie, Judy Burnley in 9 to 5, and her nominated role, Alice Murphy in Bright Star. Outside of shows, Anna enjoys songwriting, hanging out with her good friends, and being an activist for women in the community. And her Instagram is Anna K S D A. I don't, yeah, whatever. I'll link it below. Um, <laughs> Aiden Weinstein was a semi-finalist. Oh, and also Anna was a finalist. I don't know if it said it on there. Important. Yeah, yeah she was the <laughs> finalist of our of our class. Um, and Aiden Weinstein was a semi-finalist at the 2023 Jimmy Awards and also won the 2023 Kenny Award for Outstanding Actor in Leading Role in Buffalo, New York for his portrayal of Prince Eric in Disney's The Little Mermaid. He's been a member of the Academy of Theater Arts for 12 years, as well as a team representative of the Matt's music vocal performance team for two years. Next year, he will be attending Boston Conservatory, you know, at Berkeley to get a BFA. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be in pretty much all of them. Um, and then Noah Colvin, a rising college freshman like the rest of us, has been, you know, nominated this year for a Jimmy Award as Sebastian in The Little Mermaid. We got we got two Little Mermaid um, yes. cast members here. Also, your costume was so freaking amazing. I loved it. Thank you, thank you. Um, <laughs> and so he's thrilled to be here and can't wait to embark on this next journey at FOCO. And lastly, Elise Negroni won the 2023 SU Gamage um, I'm not going to read that. Best lead female actor, actress for her role as Elle Woods in Legally Blonde in Chandler, Arizona. She has choreographed productions of Legally Blonde, Matilda, and has competed in the Cinderella Scholarship Pageant for 14 years. Elise has qualified for nationals in the Nats competition, and she will study musical theater with the rest of us at VOCO. Um, and again, I'll link all of the Instagrams below so you can follow each person's journey. So, hi everyone! So nice to meet you! It's our first time hi. You've all met each other, but your first time meeting me. So, how are you? <laughs> Oh, I'm so excited to talk with you guys. Yeah. Yes, I'm yeah, so I'm happy so we get excited. to be here. I'm so excited. Yeah, I've never been on a podcast or anything. So oh, it's a yeah, podcast debut. Podcast debut. So exciting. Um, and I'm glad that it's it's with me because I know, obviously, we're all going to be, you know, Broadway stars, hopefully in the future. But <laughs> always remember that first interview and like podcast on here <laughs> when we're all you know adults doing, doing a thing <laughs> so to start i want to know for all of you i'll just go around like what was your journey to the jimmies like have the jimmies always been a goal of yours or was it something you found out about later like did you ever think that this was how you were going to finish your senior year so anna you can go first <laughs> so for me i didn't know that it was a possibility until like the end of my junior year beginning of my sophomore year i've always i've watched the jimmies since i was in like middle school i love 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 watching the jimmies especially andrew barth feldman's mm -hmm. i love that was my my favorite video of of them all um but my school never competed and so i never thought that it was a possibility until my friend and i my junior year we were like it's kirky miss Mer Miss Gerke, Miss Gerke, um, you have to do the Slishmatas. We call them the Slishmatas, the St. Louis High School Musical Theater Awards, um, just for funsies, just to see what was going on. Because, and then she was like, "Okay, I hate competition, but let's do it." And none of us were expecting anything to happen. And then we got nominated for Best Music. 
musical and of course I, it worked out well for me and I got to go to the jimmies but um but yeah it's been like a really really sur whirlwind thing because I didn't I didn't think it was a possibility mm -hmm. when, I'm so glad that yeah I mean, in what regional award did you win specifically? Like, and can you just tell the story of, I guess, like get, winning that and then having to go now to the Jimmies? Sure. So I played Alice Murphy in Bright Star, the musical. And so um, the the way that our regional awards program works is that your high school can sign up and then they'll get three judges each um, during the show. And so all of the judging happens during your show, uh, during the run of your show. And then, so they already know the winners and everything like in March, but then the regional awards program is in May. And then we just put on a silly little show and they announce who won the awards, um, but it's judged like during your thing. Um, but for me, I, yeah, I played Alice Murphy in Bright Star. So I was nominated for Outstanding Lead Actress with a lot of my good friends who are so cool and sweet. Um, and then I just like sang a little ditty. And <laughs> I guess won the award. I don't know. It was, it was <laughs> yeah, you did it. <laughs> yeah, you did. Yeah. Okay, Aiden. All right, for me, um, the Jimmy's has definitely always been a goal of mine. Like so many like middle school kids. I was watching those videos since I was younger. And I specifically remember like freshman year watching it because my friend was nominated for a regional award. And he was like, oh, if you win, like you get to go to this. And I was like, that's such a dream. And I was actually nominated in 2021 for Outstanding Leading Actor for my regional awards. It was the virtual Jimmy year. Yeah. Um, but I ended up having to basically um, give my nomination to someone else because I couldn't go to the boot camp that we had required to win so that was a bummer because i didn't end up getting to do it but then the next year my school did um our regional awards for susical and mm -hmm. i did not get nominated for a leading actor role that year so i was devastated like i was so sad i was like oh like i wanted to go so bad but then this year i got really lucky and i did little mermaid through an all-girls private school that needed boys to be in the show <laughs> and they just so happened to be doing the regional awards because my school actually did Anastasia this year, but we didn't do the regional awards. Mm -hmm. So I got really lucky and got to do it through another school. And when I got nominated, I was like, it's okay. I'm just going to like stay chill. Like, I don't, I don't know what's going to happen, but it would be cool. Um, and we had a week long boot camp like a week before our um, regional awards. So different from Anna's, um, they judged our performances and gave the nominations through there but everything was figured out except for the leading actor and actress. So we all had to come in like a week before, prepare a few songs, prepare the iconic Jimmy dance. And that's kind of how they judged us. And then we had a, an audition on that Friday for the Jimmys. And then we found out the next weekend who won. It was very surreal. I mean, it's just been like such a dream of mine for so long to actually get to, you know, go to the Jimmys and be a part of it and, you know, be in those YouTube videos and, being a character medley so it was oh my gosh like it was unreal unreal yeah. no it's interesting that i did not know that you found your way to the jimmy's through like yeah. unexpected um yeah just an unexpected way but that's mm -hmm. really cool yeah it was um, it was definitely wild yeah noah for me it was uh i really didn't know about our uh regional award program until my junior year um which is you know was crazy um and so I kind of just I did it and I put my best foot forward and I, I, that year I didn't win and so that kind of became my goal to you know be at the Jimmy's and just to have that experience um and so I got casted as Sebastian in the little in the little mermaid and I just like worked my butt off and then I, I went and I performed at the regional award program and I won. So it was kind of something that happened very quick and I wasn't really prepared for what came, but it's something I'm grateful for, very grateful for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I mean, like the riffs and everything that you're doing uh, like in the medley, I know everyone was just obsessed with it. Um, yeah. <laughs> and Elise, what was, what was your kind of into the jimmies? <laughs> Yeah, so when I was um, 
in eighth grade, about to go into my freshman year of high school, a, a girl from my school won our regional award, award program and got to go to the Jimmies. So that's how I found out about it. And then I watched every single Jimmies video and I had just been obsessed with it since I was a freshman. So I like, this has really been my dream. I've been like manifesting this for myself since for four years. And when I was a freshman, I was like, my senior musical will be Legally Blonde. I will be Elle Woods and I will go to the Jimmies. So <laughs> I, I literally, that was the plan that I'd set out for myself. So even being able to play L was just like, wow, like this is the dream role of mine and I get to do it. So that was enough for me for my senior year. And um, my junior year, I played Matilda and I wasn't a finalist at all. So I was like, uh, who knows if I'll even be a finalist this year since I wasn't last year. And then all the finalists came out and I was like, oh my God, I'm a finalist. And so we had to go in the first weekend of May and audition with a song from our show. And I sang so much better. And after my audition, I was like, that was not my best. I definitely could have done better. Um, so I was just appointed even after that. But that's how our judges pick the winner is based off our song that we come in with that day. And so they have the winner picked then. And then we all come back for our um, ceremony at the end of May. And we all the schools perform and then they announce the winner. So um, that was wild that like... I could not believe it. The fact that I had been dreaming of this for so long and it had finally happened. I was like, this, my life is not real. So yeah, that's my story. Yeah. I mean, you really truly manifested it for yourself. That's incredible. Um, and yeah, I, I mean, I think most people don't know, like you can pretty much do it every single year, right? Like if, if, if you were lucky enough um, mm -hmm. <laughs> to do it, but it's interesting hearing all the different ways that you can be nominated or, you know, get evaluated by people, whether they be in the audience or just singing a song. Um, and yeah, I mean, it seems like it's such a complicated process to go through to get 90 some nominees into one space. Um, and so can you each talk about like the insane rehearsal process that everyone has heard about where it's like, what is it, 12 hours or something like leading up to the Jimmy's that entire week, like pure exhaustion, I'm sure. Like, who was your coach? What was it? I think you guys were at Juilliard to rehearse. Like, I can only imagine how how stressful it is just being there, learning so much material at the same time, living your dream, and then also trying to stay calm at the same time. Like, can you try to explain just to everyone listening, like what that was like for you? <laughs> it's kind of like unexplainable. Now that I'm like back home living my regular life, I'm like, there's no way that I lived that and did that every day. Like that was our reality. It was, it was, it was like a movie. Like even just Juilliard on its own is so cool. Like being in first grade, watching High School Musical, and being like, I'm going to Juilliard. But and then we got to spend the week at Juilliard, and it, it's it's so beautiful. And yes, like the week, the week was, it was stressful at times, and like you would get really really tired. But for the most part, it was like the best kind of tired you know and and they all of the creatives and the staff made sure that we were um feeling good and healthy and we have these like pod leaders they put us into pods so we would have our little groups to um to go to whenever we needed anything at all and our chaperones um from our regional awards program they were just um so kind so yeah it was really stressful um we would start every day at 7 30 in <laughs> Uh, breakfast um in the breakfast line cafe at julia has great food um, <laughs> um and so no but like the biggest thing is that they they really really took care of us like yeah it was hard yeah we did a lot and like you guys can get more into like the i guess like workout specifics or like whatever you want mm -hmm. to i guess i just want to emphasize how like much they care about us and how we would we would self affirmations every morning and just breathe together and like mark our voices. It, it was just, it was a really good welcoming um, training environment. For mm -hmm. sure. And who was your coach? Cause I know there were, it was a mix of like professionals, Broadway, you know, people. Um, so who was your coach? My coach was Desi Oakley with Noah, 
Group E, group E. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. No, she's the best. She's definitely the best. I'm, I think I met her on Zoom, like during the pandemic. <laughs> but yeah. Condition of sunshine. She's so great. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and Aiden, if you want to talk about what it was like. I, that's, I would say, okay, I feel like one thing is, is that people don't realize is you are in like a Jimmy bubble. Like for the entire week, you are literally in just like a bubble with only these people. And I must say like going into it, I was very intrigued by the 12 hour days. because It's a <laughs> lot. Like you hear 830 to 830 and you're like, are you for real? But the thing was, I felt like the days went by, some of them went by slow, some of them went by fast, but like, I felt like we had so much time for like breaks. We would have like an hour lunch break, an hour dinner break. Like there was definitely time to like mm -hmm. relax, but I felt like it was just such a joy to be around all those people because everyone was so kind and humble and supportive. And I felt like we all sort of ditched the fact that like it is a competition and just really focused on like, you know, building this amazing show and just spending time with these people. Mm -hmm. And oh my gosh, like the, and I kind of touched on it, but the, the faculty is incredible. They were so sweet, so supportive. We would get, I feel like we'd get breaks every hour, like at least like a 10 minute break or like a five minute break. So like they were very good about being like, okay, take a second. And if there's one thing I feel like I learned in the rehearsal process, it's to pace yourself mm -hmm. and like know your limits because everyone was marking like throughout the week. It was a lot of like, save your voice don't go full out and they would tell us that they'd be like please mark please mark because yeah. like save your voice which was definitely an important thing to learn especially go going to school for this and like doing this in the future um but my coach was adam cantor he mm -hmm. was incredible oh my gosh my room was just full of so much talent as was everyone's but it was just like such a joy to get to sit there and just like watch these people and just be in awe of them and be like this is the future of broadway like seriously yeah it was incredible yeah, you know what I mean? You saying that Adam is your coach. I, well, he, I went to Broadway Evolved when I was like oh, I did too. here. And so he was a coach when I was there and I ended up doing like a monologue for him. And it was like so overwhelming. I ended up like bawling my eyes out in front of him. <laughs> but <laughs> no, he's the best. Yeah. So no, sweet. And it's good to hear that you were, you and everyone was being told to mark, save your voice. Cause there's mm -hmm. a lot of people I think on the internet that are just talking about Jimmy's stuff, even if they specifically have never been, um, and saying all these things about how everyone's just screaming their faces off all the time, not doing any self care, but it's good to, good to finally kind of clear it up so, since you were actually experiencing that because you know you never really know unless you're in the room and if you're not then you just hear things and so yeah that's definitely something that you know everyone I think needs to hear is you, mm -hmm. you need to take care of yourself because you know as a performer your entire body is really just your instrument what you use to do your job so if you're not taking care of that you really can't do anything else um yeah and for you Noah what was what was your experience in the rehearsal room I, it was it was it was really cool. It was very uh, inspiring. I think I've always kind of wondered, especially when I get to when I get to college, uh, how would I, you know, stay motivated because I wouldn't really have you know my parents to kind of make sure that I'm on top of things. I, I would you know I have to figure that out for myself. Um, and so with our regional award program, we had like a guest speaker. And so that was like one of my questions, like, how do I stay motivated and stay driven? Uh, and she told me, uh, just like when you're in that group of people, that's your tribe. So just being there, that will be your motivation. And at first I was like, okay, thank you. I don't really see how that works. But once I got to the Jimmy's, it was just being in a room, in a rehearsal room with everybody. We're all in the same boat. We're all there to learn. We're all super duper talented. It was just like this big like buzz of just motivation and, and love and talent. And so that was like a driving force for me. So that was very, I guess you could say, awakening or eye-opening. Um, and then just work like being in a professional setting working with professional people was something that I'm very grateful for because I'm the type of person I need strictness and I'm going to hurry up because it says we have eight minutes and 30 seconds oh no you're good you're good but, <laughs> um, <laughs> and yeah the breaks were amazing my coach was Desi Oakley and she is just like a, a 
ball of energy and it's so infectious. I love her so much. But yeah, it was very, very inspiring. Mm -hmm. And for you, Elise? Yeah, like Anna said, there's really no way to describe it unless you're in it. Like, mm -hmm. and we've all like lived it. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm really grateful that we got to have this week of nonstop rehearsals because that is what our all of our weeks are going to be like in college, especially going to a conservatory. That's yeah. what our days look like. It's just rehearsals, voice lessons, dance classes all day, every day, which is exactly what we all want to be doing. So I know I, I would do it all over again. Like I would go back and go and do all those 12 hour rehearsal days. Mm -hmm. And yeah, they really do take care of us. They have like vocal rest stickers if we're on vocal rest and don't want to talk. But um, <laughs> um yeah, I don't know. It was amazing. I loved being at the rehearsals. And yeah, all the directors would literally scream at us and tell us to mark our voices. And I, going in, I did not even think about my health being an issue. I went in being like, oh, this is going to be a piece of cake, you know. Um, I definitely underestimated that. It's difficult and it is hard. And I'm grateful that we had optionals who know what they're doing to be able to tell us to take take a five um go on vocal rest, you know, all these things that I didn't even think about. So yeah, and my coach was Marianne Hu. And yeah, I loved having a coach and um, being able to make my song better. I feel like they definitely uh, brought in the best coaches this year. Yeah, I'm grateful for that. Mm -hmm. And for all of you, what was it like when Ben Platt and Noah Galvin walked in the room? <laughs> Wild. Crazy. <laughs> no open like mm -hmm. it was insane like none of us were expecting because we were literally like we just learned the opening number like vocals and then they were like hey dinner break and then van was like no hold on hold on <laughs> next thing you know ben platt just like enters the room but it was such like a casual introduction just being like and now welcome and we were like, <laughs> yeah was it literally on monday was it monday or tuesday Monday, it was the first day. Yeah, the first day. We were all sitting there, and she's, like, listing all these credits of this, our guest speaker, and we're all sitting there, like, no way Ben Platt's about to walk in the room. <laughs> we were like, there's no oh, yeah. chance. It's and so then, great. like, the door opens. We were all like, no way. <laughs> I broke freaking page 11 of my sheet music, jumping out of my seat, so excited <laughs> that freaking Ben Platt was there. I was like, what in the world? What? Yeah, no, so I mean, that is crazy because I mean he's so many people's like you know inspiration. He's won a he's won a Tony, been nominated for another Tony, and like doing doing so much. And it's so nice that he took the time with Noah um, to really like you know just hang out with you guys for a little bit because they're both so great. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean the rehearsal experience seems like you know it's exhausting, but that's what you signed up for, and. It sounded like it was just fun because I think for, you know, at least for me and I know some other people probably who are coming into like our, you know, our vocal class too. It's like maybe you don't have musical theater people around you all the time to like work with because I know we all of us like individually have a very strong drive to be good, be good at what we're doing. There's some people, you know, around maybe our hometowns who just kind of treat it as fun or they don't really care. But when you're in a room with like that many dedicated people. I'm like, I'm sure it makes it just all the difference and it's so much more fun where you're like, okay, this is where I'm supposed to be. This is what I'm meant to be doing. And, you know, that's all you can really wish for in, a, in an experience where you're really doing so much work. But when you're around good people, it seems like it's the best. <laughs> so what was it any of your first time in New York City or your first time seeing a Broadway show? I have no idea, but if it is, you could talk about it. <laughs> was it nobody's first time? No? <laughs> Oh, this is my first York. time seeing a Broadway show. Oh, oh. your first time seeing a Broadway. Oh, that's cool. Um, but you've but, been to New York, yeah. Yeah, I was, I was in a fashion show when I was eight. When you're eight. Um, <laughs> kids, Can you elaborate? Eight. Elaborate on that, please. <laughs> I was eight, so I don't really remember much. I just remember that it was called Kids for Democracy, and we modeled like these. It was like. I don't even know what it was. I I remember swim swim trunks and some like swimming shoes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh it was, it was pretty slay. I ate them up. Um, and then we had like one like white shirt and jeans, I believe. 
it was a uh, okay. it, was, it was really cool <laughs> but I, I don't really remember <laughs> What is that? New York Fashion Show? <laughs> I know. It's on YouTube. <laughs> you mean drop the link, Liz. <laughs> but like, if y'all want to go see it, just look up kids. Put the link know. in your bio that you made. The, yeah, no, literally just be like, look at me. I'm famous. I know. That was so funny and random. It's so <laughs> weird. I'm like, just right. like down the runway. I ate. No, I ate. I'm sure you did. We I to believe little, it. I had to look and I had like a baby face and I was trying to look serious. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god now you'll be finding this like don't put your jimmy's medley in your bio put that in it's for democracy mm-hmm. 2013 yeah, yeah. For, you, for the rest of your life like you were in this fashion show when you were eight yeah um, and you, that yeah. is so funny it's so it, it, yeah we love it funny to see <laughs> <laughs> Oh my, no, that's too funny. Okay, but anyway, <laughs> for all of you, what was it like working on your college auditions while also having to do a show, and then also like maybe doing multiple shows, like Aiden, um, <laughs> or just like being busy and having to do like the most important thing pretty much in your life right now, like at the same time? Because I know I was stressed out and I wasn't doing a single show. <laughs> I think uh, for me, like I, I also tend to do a lot of shows. I did, I did less though this year because of college auditions. But honestly, the most stressful part of college auditions for me was just like the preparation and the pre-screens of the fall. Mm-hmm. And the spring, I was, I was just kind of chilling. My <laughs> audition was pretty early, and then after I got into Boco, I was like, don't need to audition here. Don't need to audition. Here. Yeah. Like I don't care. Um, but so for my spring, I was like, I was just having fun. I was doing my show for my regional awards program. Um, but the fall, it was, it was, it was a lot. But I think like I've always treated my like rehearsals and my fun um, little singing, dancing things, training and stuff as like as like my time to unwind like it wasn't like not unwind but like it it didn't exhaust me because it was like what I love so much that if I just do it then I'm like I'm having a good time and it fuels me to like you know go home and do my schoolwork and like do other things because I have this rock like my my theater community at my high school is my rock like I love them so much we did Charlotte's Web in the fall while I was doing college audition. So it was just a cute, it was a cutesy little, cutesy little time. Um, <laughs> but the audition process is actually wild. And yeah. so, so good. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we're all, we're all done with that process now, but that means we actually have to go to school and do it. So <laughs> <laughs> we don't get to just say, oh, I'm going to Boko now. We have to like start, like, do, like, start doing, yeah, I actually go to Boko and actually do do stuff. Um, yeah, for you, Aiden, doing what a million shows at one time. What was what yeah, was? I <laughs> I was doing Little Mermaid and Little Shop of Horrors at my theater, literally a weekend apart. Literally, like one of them was one weekend, and then the next weekend I was in Little Shop. And I had a goal that I was gonna have all my pre screens and all my applications done by opening night of Little Mermaid, so then it would be like. I would just be waiting and it would be like no stress about actually doing the college audition stuff. Like I could like take a break for a second and just like do my shows. And then obviously after, you know, I started getting answers. So then like I was scheduling all the auditions. Um, For me, I think a lot of my auditions were in January, February. And then I had a few, no, I didn't have any in March. I was done by the end of February, but I remember I started getting college like decisions Mm -hmm. when I, during my tech week of Anastasia. And I feel like that was definitely a test of uh, my acting ability because I had to push through the rejection. Like, oh. just like, I'd like get a rejection and then I'd have to go on stage and sing. So it'd be like, okay. But um, the spring was good because it was a lot of just like waiting and hearing. And then like, after the rejections came a lot of acceptances. So then it was just like mm. the stress of actually picking a school, but it was like a good problem to have. So I wasn't okay. like, I was like, oh, this is a good problem. Like I'm, I'm, I'm actually trying to figure out which school I want to go to. I have options. Mm-hmm. So like that was definitely very stress relieving. And yeah. then um, 
I don't know, the months like April and May were so, so chill, so great. Like once like committing and finally like picking a school and settling down and being like, okay, I'm done was such like a, was such a joy, especially after the stress of college audition season. Mm-hmm. Oh, and for everyone, like, when did you hear back from Boko? Because I heard back on like the one of the like last possible days. <laughs> like, it was not early at all. Like, was anyone's also on April the- 1st? Yeah, no, I'm like, that's I think what mine was. And I, it was funny because it was the last one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Was anyone else's like early? Because Anna, you said like Anna heard early. Yeah, so I like- heard early too. It was like January 30th. We did like, I think, yeah, yeah. there were two dates. Yeah. 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 I remember, I, 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 so confu- I remember being confused. I was like, I don't even know when it's coming at all. I, I didn't even look it up, but then it came and I was like, okay, I guess that's good. That was my last one. <laughs> yeah. No, me too. Cause out of all my acceptances, that was like, well, wow. out of all my decisions, that was the last one. And then I, it changed everything. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, but yeah, that's wild that you were doing two shows in two weekends and then doing all that. <laughs> I was like, I don't know what my brain would do if I had, if I were doing that, but good job. Cause you made it through. <laughs> and for, you know, what was your kind of doing all your, what was your like senior year, like pretty much of, of dealing with so much, you know, so many auditions and things like that. Yeah. I think during my senior year, I was really fortunate and blessed uh, to not have to do too many auditions. Uh, from one of the in-state schools that uh, I applied to. Um, I sent in my pre-screens and then they told me that I didn't have to audition. They just wanted to go ahead and like offer me a seat. So that was like a weight off of my shoulder because I was real nervous about that. Um, And so I kind of had that. And then um, I auditioned for BOCO. And by the time I got my acceptance, I didn't really have to audition anywhere else I got into all of the schools that I applied to but I didn't I didn't have to like proceed with the audition process because I had already gotten into BOCO and I wasn't gonna I wasn't gonna do that to myself um I think the most stressful thing (laughs) was waiting on like the acceptances while working on a show and then I uh my acting class we, we have it's called actors ensemble and so we had uh we did like a touring situation with uh, the student version of Wizard of Oz. Uh, and so that was the most stressful because I had to like go and like perform for all these little kids. And then like in the back of my brain, I was just like, boca, boca, boca. So that was, <laughs> auditioning wasn't, you know, the stressful thing. It was waiting back to hear the decision and hoping my thing, my uh, pre-screens and, and what I did was right. Um, and then, ooh, also once, I'm, this is taking too long, but You're my, fine. <laughs> my videos, <laughs> they weren't good. And so I had, we have like a conservatory here at my, um, at where I live. And so I did my initial videos there and I was like, Mm-mm. and so I had to like redo them at my school. Uh, and I think it was like maybe a week before some rehearsal started or something. That was, that was, that was a mess. It was weird, but yeah. Yeah, (laughs) you did it though. So that's, I mean, yeah, the fact that you got Vulcan, you're just like, yeah, we're done. I (laughs) wish I could have done that. I did not do that. I ended up doing every single audition. (laughs) I kind of wish I did apply and audition or just got the chance to audition for more schools just to get that experience. But I think you're good. Things happen for a reason. And so I can't do anything but be grateful. Yeah, yeah. And for you, Elise, what was your kind of fall, spring like? Yeah, so Legally Blonde was in the fall, which I was very grateful for that it wasn't springtime because that's when all my actual auditions were. So my goal was to get all my pre-screen sent in by like before October, but that did not happen because I was in rehearsals. I like did not have time to film anything. Um, So I missed a couple deadlines that I just and I did not end up applying to some of those schools, um, but I got all my pre-screens in, um, I think, like, the week before the Legally Blonde shows, um, and I, I I didn't audition for that many schools, um, which I'm very happy about, because I couldn't have imagined, like, going to so many auditions, 
um even like though I wasn't in shows still I feel like the amount of auditions I had was pretty crazy I couldn't imagine actually having to do other things yeah yeah um so yeah Boca was my first pre-screen acceptance my first audition and my first acceptance and I did not yeah it was wild and and it was totally meant to be too because when I went to my audition it was on Friday the 13th and I didn't even know I was I'm not like superstitious or anything but it's like it's definitely like a thing um and I didn't even realize it was Friday the 13th until after my audition was over um but yeah and then I found out two weeks later that I got in and I still auditioned for um all my other schools which was only a couple but yeah mine was pretty chill honestly no, that's good. I mean, the whole process is so scary, so overwhelming for everybody. So the fact that you feel like it was chill is <laughs> good. Because <laughs> again, it is just that entire process. I didn't really know much about it before I did it. And then I did it. And now I'm like, I would not want to do that again. <laughs> like, no <laughs> thank you. Um, and going back to like doing, you know, the jimmies while you're, you know, trying to audition for college and doing all that, like, and then finally getting there, doing that entire week of rehearsals, and then getting to do, you know, the show. Um, what was it like making your Broadway debut? It's, uh, it's, it's not what you like, you think of when you think of like Broadway debut. But it's like, it's like the perfect little storm of a dream week I don't know leading up to this they they treated us like like stars they were like you're on Broadway you're in Times Square <laughs> they, they like spoiled us so much so we really felt like we had this full experience which we did um the Broadway debut for me I I still I still have not not processed it definitely not like heart heart racing the whole time I I think I was just like really really excited to be there <laughs> above everything else I wish I I wish I took it in more but um I don't know all joy all yeah. wonderful. we got to see the the Lion King backstage and everything and be like a part of their dressing room area and stuff which which is kind of crazy we got the insights for sure yeah you're getting to be backstage at a Broadway theater not many people and on stage too not many people can say that they've done that so again it's so so cool um and for you Aiden it was definitely smaller than I thought like the backstage was small it was very like tight-knit like but I mean it's New York so like obviously everything but um <laughs> I, I feel like the coolest part for me was the opening number mm-hmm. because we were all like so fueled on each other's energy and it was just like in that moment like I remember being like I have known these people for like a week and the bond I have with them and like the trust I feel like amongst these people is unlike anything ever and then like we we just walk out and it was like I mean they told us it was going to feel like like a wall of energy but when I tell you it felt like we just all got like hit with this like energy and this applause and it was nothing like anything I could even describe like you it's one thing to like watch it on on the live stream and like you know like hear the applause but like that audience was insane like it was literally the most like epic thing ever and I I fully agree with Anna with being like it was the perfect little storm because it was like it was so surreal it still doesn't feel like it like happened but I, it's so cool to like, you know, look, look at the videos on YouTube and be like, oh my God, like there's a video of me on YouTube, like performing, like in the Jimmy's, like I am on the Jimmy's social mm-hmm. media. Like that, is, it's still just like, it's, it's so crazy. It's, there's it's, video it's, evidence now that you did it. <laughs> if you ever need reassurance, you can always. I know, I, that's, the, that's the crazy part. It's like, you're there. This is like, this moment was captured. Like, yeah. I have this to hold on to for the rest of my life. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, I love how they've made it very accessible for, for everybody. I mean, everyone from, you know, our class at Boko, everybody, I think, was watching it at the same time, just, you know, trying to spot you guys and, and cheer you guys on. And so I'm so glad that they do those YouTube videos, too, so that you can have it forever. It's not like, mm-hmm. you know, a distant memory. It's like, no, I can look and see this part that I got to 
got to present to the world uh pretty much and yeah it's so so cool and like for you know what was it like making your broadway debut it was insane and i was actually really kind of surprised because i thought that once i got backstage and you know everything like would get real that i would get real like nervous and anxious and sometimes when i get super nervous and like things start to shake around me so i thought that i would be like losing my mind but i was backstage and i was getting ready to perform and it was just like i felt calm and i was like why do i feel so calm and so it was kind of like a moment that was i guess you could say wholesome because then like if i'm this calm this is like how I know this is what I'm supposed to be doing. This is like my purpose. And so that was really uh, heartwarming and a cool thing to feel. And then getting out on that stage and hearing that applause, especially at the end, after our little, our little welcome to the Jimmy Awards. And then everybody's like, ah! <laughs> it, was just, it was, it was, it was, it was real fun. <laughs> Speechless, no words. Yeah, yeah. And for you, Elise? Yeah, exactly what they've all been saying. It was so, like, just uh, not traditional at all of a way to make your Broadway debut. But uh, yeah, I would do it a thousand more times the same way with the same people. Yeah. Um, I was not expecting the audience at all. I don't know what I was expecting, but it was not that. Like, when I walked out, like, it, it's it's... I don't know I can't even explain it like you just walk out and um the applause just gets louder and louder and the song had already been going on for probably 30 seconds before my group walks out on stage um mm -hmm. and so the fact that the applause and the screaming was the same in even more I was like what is happening like I will rewatch the video just to look at my face when I walk on stage because <laughs> it was like I just was not expecting that and it, it was just incredible like oh my god it was just it was wild but yeah I think I had the same thing as Noah where I was not nervous which I usually am but I think it's because of the people around me mm -hmm. um and also like Aiden said we got so close and bonded literally within days with some of these people so um I don't know just being able to do that with all of these people who I know I will be friends for life with um was so special even more special mm -hmm. yeah no i mean it's again like you always hear about different casts of um either tv show or a broadway show or whatever where people just bond so quickly because you're going through something that only you know what it's like going through that where you hear it with um you know things where it's just it's just kind of so much energy and so much just something very unique that everyone there kind of understands it's just that understanding of like exactly what you did um even if like you know people on the outside don't quite get it it's like you know with those people exactly what you had to do to get there um and yeah i mean it just sound sounds so cool i hope i can attend the jimmy's someday because it just sounds like so much fun i've only this was my first year actually watching the whole entire live stream like i'd never done that before i've only seen like the clips on youtube but this year i was like okay i'm gonna watch it and yeah it was so good and for aiden and noah i mean you were both a part of like the classic jimmy's medleys like and I mean, your performance is amazing. And so for both of you, like, what was it like stepping back into your into your characters who maybe you haven't, you know, touched on in a little bit and just performing again, those they're iconic songs now, both from The Little Mermaid. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I feel like, well, for me, I did Little Mermaid in November. So coming back in like June and like bringing this part back that I had like just thrown over. I was like, oh, it's, it's over. Like goodbye, Prince Eric. But then like coming back and like just all of it. Like it was so surreal. I remember we got our, um, we get sheets the first day handed to us at check-in and mine had character marked. And I was like, no way. Like no way I get to be in a character medley. So that it was probably one of the coolest experiences of my life. Cause like, I always, if there's one thing I've always watched, it's the character medleys for me. Like when I watch the Jimmy Awards, it's like, oh, these character medleys are so iconic, like Andrew Barth Feldman's and Renee Rapps and just all of these, like they're an iconic part of what the Jimmys are. Yeah. So I felt like so honored to actually get to like be a part of it. And 
now I get to go back and like my character medley is going to be on YouTube forever. Mm -hmm. And I feel like actually like playing Eric again, it was very different because I feel like I did it prior, like before college auditions. So I felt like, you know, during college auditions and you just mature so much and you just keep growing and getting better and better. So, you know, actually getting to do it as like a new performer and a little bit older I don't know if that, if that makes sense. Like, just like, I felt a little more like mature doing it this time. Mm -hmm. And obviously like, being on the Broadway stage and singing her voice was like, I mean, like so crazy, like a dream come true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it must be interesting kind of, again, revisiting something that you haven't looked at in a while. Mm -hmm. um, and the, I mean, that's the same thing for like, at least <sighs> not done Legally Blonde since last year. It's like, it's a different experience when you get to revisit something, especially with that much amazing energy around you. And for Noah, what was it like, you know, playing Sebastian again? <laughs> <laughs> for me, it was, uh, I, I did, I played Sebastian uh, late March. Um, so it wasn't that big of a time for me. So it wasn't like I had totally uh, kind of lost the character, if that makes sense. But preparing for the Jimmys, I focused more on my solo song. So I totally like neglected that song. And so it was very weird in a way because I was like trying to get back into the accent and then uh, getting used to singing the, singing in the accent and trying to figure out like what I'm gonna do with my body and you know am I gonna look at the because it was very different with my regional award program I had to sing it straight to the audience instead of to Ariel um, and so it was just it was it was a lot to think about trying to I guess you could say choreograph the song um, but it was it it was very very fun and it, and I enjoyed like doing something to make it my own and try and reinvent the character each time that I perform it like that makes sense so it was very it was very fun <laughs> and one more question did you did you guys wish that you could have done those like those intros that they used to do <laughs> the the yeah. iconic intros where you know you just strike your pose and then they introduce you but I, will say, I think it took a lot of stress out oh did I were you gonna say something <laughs> I will say uh, <laughs> it's a lot of the stress out <laughs> because um, I don't know just like walking on the stage and then like just having them like say no no Coleman or whatever and then trying to do it's just like we walked up we did it and then and it was it was it was a lot just... more smooth uh, <laughs> I thought, I thought they phone. were gonna do the posters because they like they told us they were like so make up your post and I was like no way like no way we're gonna like we're gonna do it we're gonna do it and then we were all like all the medley kids like, at, when we got over like, like, are we gonna do it are they letting us do it and then they were like they we they never even said like no they we just kind of they were like just do the pose and then start the song we're like you're like okay I guess we're not doing that yeah <laughs> well they were like on the spot though they were like come up with the pose go and we were like <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> you're like what am i gonna do oh my god yeah no, i remember no one i no one i tried to figure out our poses he was like should i do this should i do this i was like i don't know i, don't I was know. about to get up there and look a fool i said i don't know what i'm gonna do i need to practice it every night <laughs> yeah just that what's your pose Aiden? <laughs> I like <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes i was like fathoms below like i'm a sailor i don't know <laughs> yeah you guys and then and then sebastian the arms <laughs> with the with the claws and everything oh, but oh, oh my God. yeah just i mean so <laughs> iconic and the way that they fit everyone's songs together made so I mean, much like sense i love how much care they put into it it's not just like here's the nice songs go it's like no they each kind of have a meaning to to follow some of them followed like so funny and yeah, yeah. It was just the they so clearly I, I will say i will say the transition between the kinky boot song and the spongebob song was the best because we were like what a woman wants to do that and we were like so intense and then and then keegan comes and he's like well what if i'm a sponge it was like so <laughs> <laughs> They were so good. iconic. Yeah, they Amazing. literally were so funny. Like they, they were just so clearly like thought out about what characters were gonna be in what medley and like what songs specifically. Yeah. 
so it, what, like when we were singing it through for the first time we were like this is hilarious like yeah. this is so good like having having elsa tell like the witch to let it go that was, was my so favorite fun. that was that was my favorite, favorite. Oh, my yeah no and then like was it damien talking to the beast i was the like beast, I had oh, yes, so good because i mean if you know this show it's like okay it may, I mean, even if you just listen to it for the first time you're like oh my god this is perfect um and yeah again i just love how much care they put into it because i could have easily just not but the fact that they do it means so much and like that's why they become so iconic over the years where people from just medleys like you know they kind of go viral or mini viral whatever it's like yeah these are going to stay on the internet forever <laughs> and that's always just going to be always just going to be like immortalized there of you know that specific moment that specific time when you got to do that. So yeah, this is amazing. And for Elise and Anna, you were both in a tribute to touring Broadway. And as someone who sees like a bunch of touring shows, cause I'm not, you know, near New York. Like I thought it was such a great idea of just since so much of Broadway doesn't always take place in New York city. Like mm -hmm. what was it like for you creating a unique number? That's totally unique to just the Jimmy's. It was, exactly like you said like it was just creating such a unique thing that is just like a, there's no other place where you do some kind of thing like that with a big ensemble and you mesh a bunch of songs together it's it was and it was like 10 minutes long wasn't it which yeah yeah it, it was a lot we we spent a lot of time <laughs> <laughs> exactly. um but I think we all just like bonded and came together. It did take us a second to to get together. Not gonna lie, but <laughs> but we did it. You know, you know how those shows. Sometimes you're at Tech Week and you're like, "Is there gonna be a show?" Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> and then and then everything comes together and it's fine. And so that's kind of what happened to us. And I think we like we grew closer. Like I met a bunch of friends in tribute that I wouldn't have met if I didn't have that experience which I really enjoyed mm -hmm. um, and it was it was fun to go from like he's on down the road to like Ohio um yeah it was, it was a lot of fun yeah I used so many transitions I was like how do you remember all of them I don't know um and for you Elise yeah it was not what I was expecting at all I was like <laughs> tribute to touring musicals what does that even mean but it makes complete sense now like duh we're gonna be singing about driving and being on the road and about all these other cities so it, it totally makes sense and yeah like Anna was saying it I was scared but we really all just needed to put we just needed to have a little bit more faith and put our trust in our directors and our choreographers because they they're geniuses and the way they put together a 10 minute song with 30 people, I could not have like, that's wild. Um, especially with so many different songs. It's not just one 10 minute song written by the same person all in the same key. It's just like, it's crazy. Yeah, I've never been in anything like that. And it was also weird for me being around 30 people who know how to sing harmonies and remember them. <laughs> and do them even in rehearsals when we're told to mark we mark but we still sing our harmonies and it still sounds amazing i was like where am i um but yeah i also met some of my closest friends in the um in the tribute group because i think that's what we spent besides like the opening number that's where we spent our most time was in our medley groups and yeah that's where i met some some of my best friends too but yeah it was so much fun I got close. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, like, seeing you, the two, you guys, I think Elise was the one who updated us. She's like, guess what? We're on the next one. I was like, okay. We're all gonna <laughs> yeah, <I was> back, <laughs> backstage texting. <laughs> I know, because all of us were just, like, made it, just, like, so many things. Oh, my gosh. And then, Anna, you were one of eight finalists this year, and so that means that you got to sing a solo by yourself um, <laughs> on a Broadway stage. And so what was going through your mind as your name was called and you were like, okay, now I got to go sing another song as I'm like, oh, <laughs> happiness from just being a finalist. It's so, like, what was going through your head? Just like, 
tell us that entire experience of like, did you black out? Do you remember anything? <laughs> I do remember it, but I keep having to like convince myself that I'm not lying to myself that I didn't like just make this up in my head because of how just like odd. I don't know. I I was I was not expecting to be a finalist, or I was like maybe semi because I did I had a good like audition the day before, and then whenever like all the semis were announced, I was like okay cool that's completely fine like I I'm so just like honored to be here like no stress no like nothing I was like awesome can't wait <laughs> to see number. and then they like said my name and I no you my face is like <laughs> <laughs> the amount of talent at the Jimmy Awards is just actually insane. When I when I say that none of us knew who was going to be finalists, like we had no idea, let alone who was going to like win or anything like, um, of course, there's like, you know, people you look out for, but we, we really weren't focused on it. And so it was it was all kind of just like, a, oh, my gosh, now we get to do this. And so okay, so um, after we went off stage, I as I said, I didn't really expect to be a finalist so I didn't really I like prepared to do that song that day and so I'm like you know there is no use in stressing now I just it was a weird sort of calm that Noah and Elise were talking about earlier where it's like you should you should be nervous this is like the biggest thing you're ever gonna do ever um but I was just kind of sitting backstage looking around and I was like <laughs> can't wait <laughs> <laughs> Um, and I'm just, I just was really excited for the opportunity to like have a stage and be myself and um, to be validated for like just being the performer that I am, I guess, because I, I, I probably would have been more stressed if I was doing some kind of serious ballad and I try to like get into the headspace and everything. But since I was doing um, just a silly little, silly little ditty, it's like, <laughs> A funny, a funny cutesy song where I really just like relate and I just get to be myself in it. I was just backstage like, like jumping around. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, I definitely blacked out. I kind of wish I was more nervous because I, I like <laughs> in a second, but I just kind of went out and had fun. Um, but anything like I just want to emphasize how freaking talented every single person and how I wish everyone could see everyone's solos yes. like I I saw Elisa's solo and I saw Noah's solo and I'm just like I would pay to see this these performers that's that's not what you asked me but like it yeah it's crazy it's crazy to be up there with with the, the greatest yeah I mean it's just you alone on the stage i mean you were owning it you got like everyone oh, was laughing God. like your comedic acting i remember elise was texting us she was like guess what, <laughs> what she's singing she's so funny and so everyone was like okay. i was literally like guys you have no idea what you're about to watch right now yeah, yeah. And, then it, and then it happened we're all just like oh my god how can like she not win now like it was just so <laughs> so good like from a for performing like aspect of it you're just watching and you're like okay these are all the right choices for this song because yeah. like, you could take it so many ways but the way that you took it specifically oh, totally. it was, like, mm. <laughs> it was amazing yeah, and anime it was so good it you're was TikTok so, famous so now good. and TikTok you're literally viral <laughs> viral on TikTok and like everywhere and everyone's just obsessed with you and so I know everyone everyone here and everyone you know who watched you is so proud of you and and just so so glad you were able to show the world really the world what what you can do because it was so good so it's so odd like i never i never thought i'd be able to just go up on a stage like that and like like just like stick my butt out or something like <laughs> just do all the things so i completely backed up because then i looked at the video on tiktok and i was like did i really make that face in front of <laughs> those people that i'm <laughs> well i mean i think it it definitely worked um <laughs> everything that you did um and for all of you do you all like each have one thing that you would consider like your favorite memory just from jimmy's week because i know there are so many good ones but if you could just choose one 
Oh. And I'm giving you like an impossible question. <laughs> I wanna go first. Not anyone can go, just go. <laughs> It's it, that's a really hard question, actually. Weird. Oh. Like someone you met, something you did, something backstage that no one would <gasps> ever know that you did. <laughs> My favorite. Okay, I'm sorry. That was a little too much. But uh, one night, I can't remember exactly which night it was because after a while, I just kind of lost track of where I even was. But uh, <laughs> um, we were sitting out. It was me. Denver, Mark, and Lance, and Lauren, and we were sitting out in the on uh, the twenty the twenty third floor lobby. We were playing "Try Not to Laugh," and it was like the ones where you have to make like a noise, and then you kind of have to hold it in. These people were not making noises; they were saying full on statements. We were all saying full on statements, and it was like a mixture of statements, lyrics, noises, and and things, and. Uh, it was quite impossible. I was crying. It was crazy. That's my favorite memory. That's a good one. You know, stuff that you'll never, you know, someone from the outside wouldn't see. Um, right. Anyone else want to go next? <laughs> I, can go. I feel like, like, all the rehearsals in general are definitely like a core memory. Like, for me, like, what I'll never forget is just like, you know, the first time hearing all 96 of us sing together or like, like stuff like that or like, you know, the first time we all performed our specific group numbers for each other, like that day was so fun. But something that was really special was probably for me Sunday after the like character medley people did their auditions, we were done really early. We were done at like 3 p.m. So we had the whole day to just like kind of, you know, do whatever we wanted. And, you know, the tribute people would get out and like we would all get out and it felt like we all just actually really got to just like hang out and enjoy each other's presence and just like be together and the competition at that point was basically over it was just the show so it was like just getting to just like enjoy each other's presence and you know be theater kids and just like have fun not that we weren't having fun the whole week but just getting to like like let go and just like breathe and relax and just like have a good time was honestly probably my favorite part because it was like I knew Monday was going to be crazy and I knew Tuesday we were going to leave each other but it was like this felt like the calm before like the grand finale like just yeah. getting to be with each other it's like that was something that was really special yeah mm -hmm. that's a really good one um Anna Elise <laughs> I can't even choose but it's like I can't even say this is my favorite memory but I would say like the opening number on stage mm -hmm. like you really will never know that feeling until it happens to you um it was just so surreal um that was I don't even know if that was my favorite but it was one of my favorites and another thing would be again the people like the people we were with um and yeah um after we all got back from the hard rock after party um it was like pouring rain and it was awful I was like why is there hail coming down on us on our, <laughs> on our Broadway debut night um but yeah we all had to like run back to our dorms and there's a video of my friend Katie and I just running and dying laughing because we're like my hair was like beautiful and now I look like a wet rat walking back <laughs> into my Juilliard dorm after making my Broadway de debut like who can say who, can, who who has that experience except for all 96 of us like no one else can say right. that we had to run back to our dorm because it was pouring rain on us after the hard rock after party like just just a wild story but yeah that's one of my favorites too yeah that's fun <laughs> Anna um one one thing that keeps coming back to my mind is a a day in our coaching groups or like our solo coaching groups with um Desi Oakley we had like family time and it was because we were we were really truly a family like our whole coaching group was a family and so we um we got through things quickly and so we had extra time to just sit and talk with each other and so we all got in a circle and we just sat on the floor and we were like okay who needs any help with like anything um in their song and so we just sat and we kind of shared some personal stories but like we also shared how we wanted to 
uh, work that into our art and work that into what um, message we're trying to send with our pieces. And it was just like, I, I don't know about you guys, but like from where I'm from, it's like, it's rare to have those, those actual conversations with these real artists who care so much about um, what they're giving to the world. And it was just like, I'm with people who think like me. And um, we got to explore that with each other. And it was just, it was really nice to sit and debrief when, oh, my, my, I'm, I'm so sorry, I'm changing my answer. And one of my favorite moments is um, my roommate, my roommate, Sami and I's debriefing in our room after, after every day, we would just talk through everything and we'd just sit down and we would write in our little Jimmy journals and <laughs> just take a breath and be like, this is real. And you were both finalists. Like that's yeah. so, that's so cute. That's so cool. He's 15 years old, which I'll never believe. My God. <laughs> yeah, that is great. But that's so sweet that you both like did that every single day. And like, we're trying to, you know, kind of soak up that great, great time in your life when you're just doing, doing the thing and doing exactly what you want to do with, you know, all of us with what, what we all want to do with the rest of our lives. Um, so, I yeah. love that. Oh, yeah. See, the Michael Jackson musical. MJ the musical in so freaking insane. I saw it last year. It's so good. It's so good. We when I saw Thriller, I was sitting next to uh to Lily, uh, which was um the best actress for my rap program. And after Thriller <laughs> during Thriller, we were kind of just like, and we were like looking at each other like, and then afterwards, I was just like so so like shocked. Like I was speechless. That show was really good. How many shows did you did you guys end up seeing like as a group? Just, just one. that one. Oh, just the one. Oh, well, we we took up the Some entire like front mezzanine. Yeah. <laughs> and it was like I like I remember during the show I turned around and I was just like looking at ev I just like looked at everyone because I thought it was somebody and everyone was just like <gasps> it was like. That was probably another, uh, it was just like such a core memory. Like that will, that image will be uh, engraved in my brain. Just like how happy everyone was to be there. <laughs> like the joy of those 96 nominees. It was like, there was nothing. Everyone was just so joyous. And like everyone loved each other. Like we were all just like a giant puddle of love. Oh, <laughs> I had already seen I had already seen MJ, so I knew it was coming. And so I would be looking at the everyone's faces before, like even, so I don't know if spoilers for people watching, but you guys already know, I, I don't care, I'll just say it. Um, and like act one, there's like a little snippet of thriller, but not really thriller. And so, but I knew like the big thriller was coming. So um, I would be looking at people's faces right when the song would start i forget who i feel i think it was langston and like a group of guys just like jamming out the whole show it was so funny to watch i yeah i loved watching the people in the audience that was my favorite <laughs> the only thing i hope is that they weren't singing along because no do not sing oh. along <laughs> No, the Jimmy nominees were very respectful. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm sure. But I mean, the rest Just, of the audience. Because <laughs> that happened to me. It was terrible. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. No, that show is so energetic. And, like, probably one of the best ones to take all of the Jimmy nominees to. Because, it, again, it's just, like, ramping up that energy of just excitement. And, like, okay, this is, like, one of the coolest shows on Broadway. Mm -hmm. um, and just... Yeah, totally. some people probably their first Broadway show, first time being in New York. It's like you really have no idea. So it's like that that's great that they were able to do that for you guys. And they featured uh, so much MJ in the opening and the closing. Oh like we got to do Michael Jackson stuff. So like that was really cool. Like it was like how we opened the show. We opened it with uh yeah. Don't Stop Till You Get Enough. So it was like getting to do that and then like we all heard that song and we were like, mm-hmm, we know <laughs> this one. We know yeah. this one, turn it up. <laughs> No, again, like, I mean, so many songs being featured in that opening, closing, shocked, like, what was it, Kimberly Kimbo, like, almost famous even, it's just so much 
so many like connections that you never thought were even possible. Um, and do you guys have any advice for those future Jimmy nominees? Like uh, something either to stay present, some just some form of advice, whatever you want, really. I think. The way um, I think. Oh. <laughs> go ahead, go Anna. <laughs> Just as you said, stay present, but also I think what made us so successful and what made our experience so fulfilling was that we didn't focus on the competition aspects at all. Like so much more to it. That's like the the like one percent of the experience. Um, but we all just leaned into like getting to know each other and getting to just like my biggest advice is learn about your peers like be so curious and like hang out with people like yeah you do want to get some sleep but like you're never going to get this time back ever so treasure every moment and if you're like complaining about something please remember that like you wanted this for so long and that this is so wonderful and that like it's worth it um but yeah just lean into those lean into those friendships for sure yeah mm -hmm. i fully agree with anna I feel like the best part ended up being the people in the group of people that we were with. Um, the advice that I'd give would be like, stay present, soak in every single moment and really pace yourself because it is, it's a big week. But like Anna said, it's, it's really important to like, remember to socialize and like, spend that quality of time with these people because those were some of the fondest moments and that probably made yeah. the performance monday night that much more special so just enjoy it i would say uh you know this is kind of kind of a little more straightforward uh but just to stay focused as well uh i think you know the people and making friendships and all that, that is, it's, it's really important, but uh, also stay focused because they're long days and they treat you like professionals. And it's a glimpse into one day when you do this professionally, what your days will be like, what your life will be like. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's really important to kind of just uh, focus and focus on yourself, know your limits, uh, things like that. Cause it, it got really, uh, exhausting and not stressful but I guess you could say taxing a little bit for me so uh and everybody's different but yet go with the mindset of this is an experience we're here to learn and we're here to make friends and uh just and just to make the best out of it because it's a once in a lifetime opportunity especially if you're a senior mm -hmm. yeah. yeah I have two things um one of them is like what they've been saying, but I think what made our class even more special is that none of us really were there to win. You know, we were all there for the experience. We all, we all get the same experience. We're working the same hours. We're all in a medley. We're all working with the same directors. We all get to audition for the same people. The same people get to watch all of us. Um, and then we all get to make our Broadway debut. So why why focus about um, competing against your peers who are your friends too? Um, so yeah, that's my first thing. And then another thing is soak in. You never get this chance again. Like the first day I remember when we were all doing our introductions and stuff, I was sitting there thinking to myself, I was like, I'm here with the best of the best in a Juilliard rehearsal space at the freaking Jimmy Awards. Like, who gets to say that? So even like, sometimes when rehearsals would get hard, especially in the tribute number, I would be in those rehearsals, just even if I wasn't working on anything, just thinking to myself, I'm at the Jimmy Awards. Like, if it gets difficult, that's what I would, that's what I would say to myself. It's like, what, like, days are hard but it's all worth it mm -hmm. um and yeah just like push through it and remember that this really is once in a lifetime mm -hmm. yeah no that's you guys all have great advice for you know people that you know are gonna come in and do that all over again uh, you know happens every Crazy. year 
there's always more nominees gonna be there and i mean it's funny because you guys are all like once in a lifetime opportunity unless you're mackenzie kurtz then you get to do it multiple times but well, unless you're tyler tyler ginto brody who has went <laughs> three times oh my god three times and he's, he's and gonna be here and he'll go again and he will be a four-time jimmy nom i just know it oh wait he's not a senior but no. that is insane i don't <laughs> Because, I mean, for most people, it's like, you know, senior year or like, but I mean, the people that are starting out as freshmen, I'm just like, oh my gosh. There were a will lot of under <laughs> It's like so. There were a lot more underclassmen than I was expecting this year. Mm -hmm. yeah. I thought it would be mainly seniors, but. Yeah, well, because you always think about that, like, usually, you know, in high school, like, Lee's are played by senior, whatever, but it's, like, this year, it really mm -hmm. was, like, so many underclassmen, so many young, young people um, <laughs> that are all so talented. And so, last question, how excited are you all to be attending VOCO? Because I am so unbelievably, like, just crazy excited, stressed out, but also excited. Um, and so, what is, like, the one thing maybe that you're looking forward to the most when it comes to moving getting to go to boco <laughs> so freaking excited i think like a lot more so since we just we did like the jimmy's week and i feel like that kind of replicates just like a little bit how uh, the good conservatory style with like all of your peers is going to be doing rehearsals every day and everything i think it, it probably prepared us for like some of the harder things that are gonna happen um and like being independent and living in a, in a dorm and stuff. So now I'm like less worried about that. And I'm just so excited to be in the environment. Like, I know it's just gonna be glowing with energy, just like like the Jimmy's room. Like we're just gonna have so much energy and we're, we're all there for a similar reason. Um, I'm just so excited for like the collaboration and meeting everybody and being in a city cause I live in Missouri, but- <laughs> <laughs> to be in Boston um no I I feel I feel so like ready I just I just want to go I just want to go <laughs> Anna's ready Anna's very ready it seems like <laughs> I feel like it was like a the Jimmies were like uh just like a handful like a sliver of what Boca will be like especially like meeting you know these three people amazing beautiful people and we bonded so much I was like, oh my gosh, I get to spend the next four years of my life like with them. Like, I, I'm just so like grateful and humbled and honored to like get to attend school with these people. And I know like every, everyone works so hard and I think we're just gonna have like the best time ever. Like, that's all I can keep thinking about. I'm like, it is gonna be so fun. And the city of Boston on its own, I mean, Great, great place to go to school for four years, for sure. And the training is going to be, like, immaculate. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and Noah? Uh, I'm excited for a lot of the performance opportunities. And just, like, because we're <laughs> partnered with Berkeley School of Music. So uh, being around seasoned musicians, that's going to be very exciting. And then also there are, like, three billion other schools in the Boston area. So just, like, going out and hanging out with friends that I have at the conservatory and then meeting new people who go to freaking Harvard, hopefully. That'll be <laughs> quite insane. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'm so excited to go. Like, I feel like I'm I'm ready. I want to move in. Um, and the fact that I just loved being at the Jimmy so much and being at rehearsals all day, I just know that doing that for four years is gonna be exactly what like I've dreamed of. Um, I think I'm most excited for the training and getting better. And um, I just can't wait to see my growth and everyone's growth throughout even just the next year. Like I know we're all gonna change so much, which is so exciting. And that's what we're all there for. We're all there to work and work hard and do what we love. And, and yeah, getting to do it with um, these, well, all of you guys and, um, everyone who I haven't even met yet. Yeah. I just can't wait. Yeah. It's going to be so great. I'm just excited because it's a whole new chapter of all of our lives where we're going to start college, do all the things, get our BFAs, showcase, whatever. We'll do all the things. We're going to have fun because 
it seems like we have a really great class this year. And so I'm just so excited. And yeah, just thank you, Anna, Aiden, Noah, and Elise for being here today. I'm so glad we we're able to make this happen. When I figured out that we had four people like going to the Jimmy's, I was like, okay, that's that's definitely a podcast that's gonna need to happen <laughs> because it's just, it's so, so cool to have people that I know now. I've never had people that, you know, I know going to the Jimmy's or doing something like this. So it's so unique. I'm so proud of all of you because you're amazing. Um, and I can't believe we're going to school together for so long. Um, it's going to be great. And to everyone listening, please make sure to follow all of them. I will link all their Instagrams. If it's YouTube below, I don't know how it works on Spotify. I'll figure it out. Uh, <laughs> and so just thank you so much for listening. Please make sure to follow me at Broadway Corner with Ashley Hall on Instagram and Spotify. And make sure to follow Broadway underscore Corner on Instagram, TikTok. And also, what did I write? Oh yeah, YouTube, YouTube. <laughs> so thank you so much for listening and we'll see you next time. <laughs> You've been listening to Broadway Corner with Ashley Hall. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see you next time.